What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and today we're getting into another video in my best phones of 2017 series and today I want to talk about the best Android phones for value. So these are all the Android phones below $500 USD um, that have been available for that average price at a majority of retailers and carriers here at the end of the year. So it doesn't mean that they started at that price but that you can get these phones for that price now. Now, I'm gonna do a top five, but I do have an honorable mention that I wanna start with. This is not part of the top five, but there's only one reason that it isn't part of the top five, and that's because I wasn't able to use this phone properly on LTE. This is the Xiaomi Mi A1 Android One phone that I was able to import from my friends at Gearbest. Uh, I believe the phone cost a couple hundred dollars over on the Gearbest website if you're interested in importing one. The main downside to this phone for me is that the phone cannot be used on LTE here in the US. Uh, you're gonna get 3G service for the most part everywhere you go. But I use this phone for you know taking pictures, um, using it day to day on 3G. It's incredibly smooth. The battery life was very good. Obviously I can't get an overall idea of the battery life, how it would be on LTE service. Um, I mean, that's the main reason why I didn't put it in the top five. But I love this phone. Uh, Xiaomi hardware combined uh, with the stock Android software on Android One, you're gonna get good software updates. Uh, you got a nice camera, fingerprint sensor, good build quality. Uh, Oreo has already started to roll out to the Mi A1 in a beta, and it's bring fast charge support through USB Type-C here on the bottom. This is a great phone. I hope that Xiaomi starts bringing some of their phones to the US officially uh, so we can experience this with LTE band support and then see what it's really like and put it up against other phones uh, in this top five that you guys are gonna see today. So the next phone on my top five, this is the number five phone in my top five for value. This is the Moto Z2 Play, which I carried for quite a while in the middle of the year when I picked it up. I compared the Moto Z2 Play to the Moto Z2 Force. Uh, and I came to the conclusion that at the time, the Z2 Play was a better phone. The Z2 Force has dropped in price quite a bit. T-Mobile, you can get it for 375. So if you can get it for that price, the Z2 Force is also a great phone. It's a little bit of an upgrade, um, but the price initially was over 700 bucks. The Z2 Play, you can get this from around 200 to $250 right now if you look around. I'll drop some links in the description for all of these phones. You've got nearly stock Android software, as Motorola usually offers, which is really nice if you like that close to stock look. Settings are gonna be very close to stock. Um, you've got this pretty much stock launcher on here. The other great thing about the Moto Z2 Play is that it's a very thin phone and has the Moto Mod support. This is actually the cheapest phone that you can really get uh, from 2017 with these updated specifications that has the Moto Mod support. So this guy does have a Snapdragon 626, very efficient in terms of battery life. I got really great battery life with this. The camera is sort of the only drawback which you normally expect from a phone in this sort of classification and tier. The uh, camera's really not the best in the world, but if you're getting a phone the 200 to $225 price point with Moto Mod support, uh, everything that that entails, fingerprint sensor, uh, great software support from Motorola, and that stock experience, I was very impressed with the battery life. So this is number five on my list, the best value phones for 2017. Coming in at number four is the Essential Phone, PH1. Now I had this in my top five phones, uh, for the top five phones that I liked in 2017. This was, I think, number five or so in my top five phones uh, that I enjoyed in 2017. And the reason is because Essential priced this at $699 in the beginning. They realized it was way too high. They brought the price down to $499. It was even down to $399 at one point. Uh, I've been running the Android Oreo beta. They've improved a lot of the touch latency issues. Uh, overall, I've noticed this has gotten a lot smoother since I've been using it on the Oreo beta. The camera, you know, what can I say about the camera? It's still not as great as it should be for flagship sort of tier, but now that they brought the price down to $499, I've gotten some really good shots with their portrait mode. They've been updating the phone with security updates. The build quality on this thing is just bananas. I love the titanium around the sides, the ceramic back. I love the form factor. It's a very small sort of footprint in your pocket uh, combined with these premium materials. You get a very nice large screen. Uh, the notch at the top is less bothersome and annoying than the one on the iPhone 10, in my opinion. And it runs almost identically stock Android, even more stock than what's on the Pixel. I would say the Essential Phone is pretty much the personification of stock Android these days. And if you get a chance to run it, like I said, on this Android Oreo beta, which I'm running right now, and I think once the stable version comes out, people are going to see that this phone is a great value in 2017. And I hope the second Essential Phone in 2018 uh, delivers even more impressive things for us to look forward to. So that's number four on my list. 
At number three on my list, it is the Moto X4 Android One Edition. Now I picked the Android One Edition specifically again because with the Android One Edition you do get those great software updates. This guy does run the Snapdragon 630, also a very battery efficient processor in the 600 series. Uh, similar to the Z2 Play, the camera is not the best one in the world, but you do get very close to stock software experience running Android 7.1.1, and right now this is actually rolling out Android Oreo as well. I just haven't received the update yet on my Moto X4, but it is coming, so you're really going to get really quick updates if you buy one of these Android One phones, and that's why it made my list for the best value, two of them, the Mi A1 and the Moto X4. I also really like the build quality of this phone. It's just a pretty looking phone. It looks a lot different than the Motorola phones that we've seen over the past few years. Um, it does have the dual cameras, does not have Moto Mod support, so if you want that, you'll have to look elsewhere. Otherwise, you know, it's a very nice phone overall, very small footprint, fingerprint sensor. Again, like I said, the main downside for me is the camera, but if you appreciate stock Android, if you appreciate getting those quick updates through Android One, and if you want to use Project Fi, this is a great option. Uh, you could get it for $399 at launch, but I think it's been on sale a couple of times, maybe around $329. Um, so this phone might even go down to around 300 eventually. And at 300, this is really a great buy. So that's number three. At number two on my list of best value phones, it is the LG G6. Now you're probably saying the LG G6 did not launch under $500 and that would be true, it did not. Uh, the LG G6 launched around, I think 650 or 700, but at the end of the year here, you can easily find an LG G6 new for under $500. And this is a great phone if you want to get a flagship phone with all the options that come with that, faster software updates, support, um, accessory support, and all that kind of stuff, and still get a flagship phone for under 500 bucks, made by a top tier manufacturer. You get the extra tall form factor, which was the big uh, trend in 2017. The only really downside to this phone, it has a great camera, great design in my opinion, fingerprint sensors fast. Uh, the two downsides here are the software. I'm not the biggest fan of LG software. It's still not quite close enough to stock to me. There's kind of a lot of stuff going on. And then the other downside to this particular phone is that with the LG G6, you're going to notice that the battery life is just not that good over time. So you guys can see, I actually just took this off the charger earlier and played around with it. I'm already down to 79% and I probably don't even have more than an hour screen on time was familiarizing myself with it before I made this video because I haven't used it in a couple of months. But this phone, the battery just drains over time. I've noticed that with every LG phone. Um, obviously, if you can get a battery pack, a Mophie or something like that, and you don't care, it's not a big deal. Probably still gonna get three, three and a half hours of screen on time. That's just not enough for me. And that's why it wasn't enough to make it to number one in my list. The camera though is fantastic. Everything else about this phone is a great package uh, to get a flagship experience at a good price. And of course, probably no surprise to anybody who watches my channel, the number one phone for value in 2017 is the OnePlus 5T. Now, if they hadn't released the OnePlus 5T, the OnePlus 5 probably would have been here as well, but the 5T iterates on that, gives you even better value. Rear mounted fingerprint sensor, that super fast face on lock. You've got that 18 by nine aspect ratio, extra tall aspect ratio on the front, which brings it into a more modern form factor. Really great software. Oxygen OS is definitely my favorite software out there. You got the dark mode, the accent colors, you got the alert slider. The camera on here is better than the one on the Essential phone still, even though it's, you know, Essential is iterating, but the camera on here is still better than that. Uh, the only phone in this top five that really competes with it is the LG G6. It's probably a little bit better than the OnePlus 5T camera still, but you do have the great dual cameras on here. For $499, it's hard to beat this package. Snapdragon 835, uh, six or eight gigs of RAM, 64 or 128 gigs of storage. They just got the complete package going on. There are a couple of downsides still, which I mentioned in my 5T versus Pixel 2 XL video, but when you're paying this price, it's really easy to overlook those for all the positives that you're getting. All right, guys, so those are my top five value phones for Android in 2017. If you guys have some other ones that you think were better or if you disagree with one of my choices, I know a lot of people are going to find the essential phone choice to be a little controversial. So if you have another choice that you want to throw out there, feel free to do so. You guys can find me at dopetechdaily.com. 
Google+, Instagram, and Twitter, the link's in the description. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want me to see future videos like this. You can also find me writing over at gadgethacks.com and check out their YouTube channel where I'm making a lot of videos. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.